Hello, everybody. Back with another episode <laughs> of me painting shirts. Regular old day. Let's see what I have to paint today. Graffiti spray can design on the back of a shirt. Let me get these set up. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've streamed, guys. I missed you. Um, I've been so busy with group orders and other things that I haven't had time to sit and just paint a bunch of regular orders in a while. I've been looking forward to it. And since I've streamed last, man, these subs the subscriber count has I exploded. I was at like 3,000 last time, and now I'm at 30-something thousand. It's ridiculous. That one popular video just blew up. Um, I don't know what to expect, how many people will actually stick around, but for now, it's really awesome to get the support that I am from you guys. Thank you for that. Graffiti design. It's a po It's a polka. A polka? A polka? Some graffiti flames, rebels. Caleb, another graffiti design. We got some script and some graffiti today. More graffiti letters, calligraphy. I survived COVID-19 and all I got was this stupid shirt. Okay, that'd be neat. Another spray can design and some more script style calligraphy, Bertha. Okay, I think we're good, guys. My compressor is outside. You won't hear the compressor today. That's gonna be really great. Let me open up my chat here. Whoa, lots of comments. What's up, everybody? Let me not talk here. I'm going to try my best to respond to all these comments today, but it looks like they're coming in real fast. What's up, guys? Let's get started. Oof. I haven't even touched the airbrushes today, so hopefully I can get set up quickly. <laughs> oh, hi, I like your videos. Hi, I'm glad you like my videos. Hola, hola. I got lots of, lots of my... My Spanish brethren today. Can't do that today either. Let's just start with a simple old calligraphy design. Shane. Purple, black, and gold on the front of this tank top. You see that skipping that my airbrush is doing? This is because I didn't properly set things up. I can fix that. That's because there was air bubbles in the tube of my paint. All right. Throw a drop shadow on there. I love your videos. I'm getting a lot of... A lot of that. Thank you. It'd be awesome to see that I'm inspiring somebody to learn something new. I've been making some improvements to the studio and to my equipment. Uh, I got a microphone going on and I got the compressor going. So you should be able to hear me better without so many distractions. Um, I got some music in the background. Hopefully it's not too loud. Let me answer some questions. Where did I learn to do this? All right, a little quick life story, I guess. Um, I learned to do this. Let me start one of these graffiti designs so I can think about it. C-A-L-E-B. I learned to do this about 12 years ago at King's Dominion at a theme park locally. I was painting outside. It was a seasonal job. I did that for a couple years. I started out terribly at airbrushing, just like everybody else would. Um, real, real janky lettering like everybody else. Um, but I had some really good teachers at the time. Where's my paint? My son comes in here and he likes to play with my paints. Um, but I learned at the theme park that a couple of years, it probably took me three or four months of practicing two or three days a week until I was good enough to actually start doing orders. And I started with the simple script kind of designs like this and they were, <laughs> they were good enough, I guess, but not great. Um, but after that seasonal job ended about two years later, I opened up a shop in the mall and I started running that shop by myself for a while. And I did that for like two years and finally started growing this online portion of the business and been doing that by myself for a while now. And really, 
all of my practice has just been painting orders. Um, like I said, I got lucky having some good teachers in the beginning teaching me the fundamentals of airbrushing itself. But when I started airbrushing, I had no artistic style, really. Um, I wouldn't really consider myself an artist, certainly not a graffiti artist. I had no lettering skill. Um, that all came with just practice. But this style lettering right here, it's simple um, as far as graffiti lettering goes, but I call it my graffiti style. This is my favorite lettering to do. It seems to be the most popular as well. Um, lately I've had a lot of graffiti artists, real graffiti artists, getting on my case, calling me a toy and all that, and I understand that because this isn't real graffiti. It's very simple lettering, but the, you gotta understand that what I'm doing here is fulfilling orders for customers. They've bought these things, they expect it to look kind of like the design, and they expect to be able to read it. It needs to be legible for them to, you know, it doesn't matter how cool it looks, if they can't read their shirt, they're not gonna be happy with it. Um, so I'm limited to how stylistic I can get with some of these letterings, which is why I'm so excited to be getting a little bit of a following here on YouTube, which will allow me to paint what I want to paint and hopefully entertain you guys enough to want to watch me paint and me be able to paint for fun, not just for another customer's order. It gives me a lot more freedom and that's going to be really neat. So. Um, going to be doing more and more of that. Those alphabets that I did, those were a lot of fun. I want to do more of those. And I want to start doing stuff other than just simple lettering. Um, but I'm a little picky about what I paint because I paint all day, right? So I don't want to just paint everybody else's requests. I want to paint custom fun stuff, but not just whatever, you know, can you draw my dog and, and whatnot. I don't want to paint your dog. I want to paint what I want to paint. So. All that to say, I'm excited to branch out into other styles soon. I'm rambling a little bit here because I'm nervous. The beginning of live streams always do that to me. Especially when I haven't done it in a while. What other questions do we have? <laughs> Make a logo, please. What kind of logo? What do you mean? Big question, that's another question, a big question that I've gotten a lot of and I've seen a lot of comments on on that popular video is does it fade away when you wash the shirt? No, it does not. Um, yes, it will fade away eventually and uh, slowly over time as all shirts do. But no, you put those in the washer, you're not gonna have a white shirt. You're gonna have this design a little, little tiny bit less vibrant. Um, but you wash it in cold water, which is what I recommend and it's best to let it air dry, but you can also throw it in the dryer inside out. The shirts last for years. I have shirts that are years old. If these things washed away immediately, they would not be a very good business strategy. So, so no, they don't wash away. If you've gotten a digitally printed shirt, a DTG shirt, um, those fade just as fast as airbrushing does. So keep that in mind. How much do I charge? It depends on what you're getting. Um, simple shirts like this script one here, they're the, they're the cheapest because they're the fastest to do. They're around $25. And more complex graffiti designs can go up from that. Really the price is always based on how long it's gonna take me to paint. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm trying to get away from, not completely, but to paint less customer orders, again, I kind of already mentioned this, paint less of these and do more of my own artwork. Um, but the only way to do that is through you guys and your support. Um, not only watching videos and liking and subscribing, which is all great, but also, you know, support monetarily, if that makes sense. I have a channel membership program. Now you can join for $2 a month, whatever. Once I start getting enough people that are interested in the work and want to learn how to paint, um, then I'll be able to paint a lot cooler stuff than Caleb's name on a t-shirt. This is not working. Dang it, bro, I missed most of it. I'm in school. That's all right. Which colors are you used to graffiti? What? Oh, we're talking about the brand. I use Createx paints right now. I also really like ETAC 
and Aquaflow paints. Um, this isn't working, I'm not gonna use this. Pretty much all airbrush paint is perfectly fine. It works great. Um, whatever you can get your hands on, whatever you want to use, everyone has their own preferences and stuff like that. Um, it's fine. There's not a huge difference between them. The important part is that you're just painting. Now you're just trying. If I haven't gotten the question already, I know that I'm going to. What airbrush do I use? I use, these are Omni 3000 airbrushes. They're siphon fed, they're dual action. Um, but there's a lot of other alternatives that are great. Iwata makes their um, Iwata Neo, which is probably the cheapest brush that's of good professional quality that I've come across. Um, they're about, I think they're like 60 bucks. These are about 80, but again, it's a matter of a preference. There's lots of different tools and materials you can use. There's no reason to be married to one particular brand. I've used many of them and they all work great. I need a drink, guys. I need to chill. I'm gonna color this one in. That's what I'm gonna do. Purple, black, and gold. I'll start with the gold. Where am I from? I am from, right now I'm in Virginia. I guess you would say I'm from Virginia. I moved here when I was eight. No, I moved here when I was like six, actually. I don't know. My dad was in the Air Force. I moved all over the place. But I landed in Virginia pretty young. Do you ever use graffiti media other than airbrush? Sometimes I've been uh, dabbling on the iPad with Procreate quite a bit lately. Most of my, I kind of hit on this in the beginning, most of my artistic background is in airbrushing itself because like I said, when I started, I didn't really, I mean, I was an artist, but I didn't, I didn't have any lettering skills and I really kind of just painted sometimes for fun or drew for fun but I wasn't any good. It was only once I started airbrushing that I really started enjoying art and lettering especially. And painting in this large format is way different than painting with a pencil with your wrist on paper. Um, I'm not using my wrists, if you watch and, and you know pay attention, I'm not using my wrists to paint. I'm using my elbows and my shoulders and my whole body to paint and taking those that muscle memory and trying to translate it back down into painting with your wrist on paper for me has become it's been a little difficult especially with cursive lettering because I'm left-handed um, cursive lettering is made for right-handed people you know this the motion of the letters curved this way so taking my left hand and trying to curve the opposite way with hands it's, it's a little more difficult I can do it and obviously people that are left-handed still know how to you know can write but to get nice smooth flourishy letters and stuff left-handed on paper for me is a lot more difficult than doing it in person or in person with an airbrush and also just like the the ability to color and stuff with the airbrush and blend lettering and whatnot i find myself working a lot slower on paper and even digitally a lot slower Let's do this COVID shirt. I survived COVID-19 and all I got was this stupid shirt. Let's go. I survived. COVID-19 is gonna be the big part. And all I got was this stupid, okay. Let's start. COVID-19 bigger. And all I got was this. Let's do all that one line. And all I got was this stupid t-shirt. And all I got was this.
stupid t-shirt. Actually, a stupid shirt. This design has butterflies on it, so. <whistles> Trying to keep up with these comments, guys. I got so many coming in. Do, 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 do. Butterflies. All right, I need to shadow. I'm only gonna shadow the important words. So these are the big ones. When you're laying out a design, it's important to understand the context, especially if there's a lot of lettering on it. What words stand out? What words are important to the sentence structure? Which ones need to be bigger? And you need to think about the layout before you get started. Your lettering itself can be great, but if you don't know what to emphasize, um, you're missing out on opportunities to emphasize it. What color is here? Purple. Just purple. Whoa. Not a huge fan of this outline all around the design, but it is what the design they pick included. So I'm going to do it. I'm doing these stars and accents around here to help frame the design as a whole. I'm trying to make a cohesive shape for the whole thing. I don't want to just have a random weird blob. I want it to be contained within like a circle here. And that's what I'm getting at. Thinking about doing a live stream of painting like a canvas or something and doing a giveaway soon. I don't know if anybody would be interested in that. But I think it'd be cool. Hi. All right, I think I'm warmed up. Let's do something. Let's do something cool. Let's do a graffiti design. As I drink my magnesium supplement. Red, black, and orange. I gotta get my comment reading device. That would be cool. That would be cool. I gotta figure out how to do that on YouTube. Just like read everybody's comments, I don't know. Are requests allowed? Not right now, because I'm uh, painting orders. These are already purchased shirts from people that I'm fulfilling, but I will have live streams that I'm just doing requests over and over. Um, those are in my, if you go to my memberships, there's a tier there where I have probably weekly live streams and we'll just spend an hour painting only your requests and we'll just have fun doing whatever. But right now, no, I'm painting orders. Rebels, R-E-B-E-L-S. On the back, yeah. That'll be fine. 
Bro, you are the best. That's not true. I appreciate that. It's not true, though. Let's... Hmm. I'm learning a lot. I'm super glad you're learning a lot. That's my goal here. Airbrushing is so foreign to a lot of people. Um, not only is there a lot of like negative stigma behind airbrush being old school and trashy and washing away and everything like that, um, but airbrushing seems to be like in opposition to real, in quotation marks, um, graffiti artists. For some reason if I use this tool instead of a spray can then I'm not a graffiti artist anymore and um, I get called a bunch of names. And what I'm trying to do is show people that, you know, granted I'm not the best graffiti artist in the world, but you can do graffiti with this tool just as well and it's a lot of fun to use and it's a lot cheaper and easier to get started in and you can do the inside in your own house so you don't have to go bomb walls um, I've read a lot of opinions lately um, on some of my videos about how I'm just teaching kids how to do graffiti so they can go paint on walls and be vandals and that's not what I'm doing here just because I write letters in this shape instead of in this shape it doesn't mean that you're a bad person uh, you can do this artistically and have fun and it's you know I need more people to realize that this is just another art form I'm not encouraging anybody to go paint on walls illegally although I love some street art when there's a client involved or a wall that's you know free to be painted on vandalizing properties and cool kids if you're just trying to get your artwork out there and you got a message to say well go paint it on some other wall <laughs> if you're not good enough for someone to want your artwork on the wall <laughs> then that should speak to your talent not you know nothing else I notice when you do graffiti letters, you leave spaces between most of the letters, but always close the last one off. Is there any reason why? Well, I close off the whole design and on the outside. Sometimes I'll close each letter completely, um, and sometimes I'll leave a gap, like you're saying. It just depends on the style. Every shirt is a little different. I kind of, like these letters are a lot sharper. Sometimes I'll do a lot more rounded letters and whatnot. I just kind of whatever I'm feeling as I'm going. Sometimes I like to leave that gap between letters as much as possible. 
one of the first guys I learned from, David Walls, used to do that, and all of his letters looked like one big bubble. His words was one big bubble, and like you could you could make out each letter because of the context of it, but the letters weren't individual letters, and that was really neat. I started trying to emulate that style a little bit. Um, so every now and then, it's fun to do that. Dun, dun, dun. All right, am I doing this right? Red, black, and orange. Yeah. Forgot what I was doing. The big difference between using the spray cans and using an airbrush is that um, you notice that I'm painting directly over my black lines and it's not covering it up. Um, with spray cans, almost all of your paint is opaque, which means if I painted this red right here, it would cover up the yellow, it would cover up the black, and it would just be left with red. But in airbrushing, most of your paint is transparent, so I can paint directly on top of these black outlines and you still see the black outlines. Um, that's because this paint layer is almost like an additive layer. If you're using something like Photoshop or Procreate, it's an, it's an additive or overlay layer, not really an opaque normal layer. And that allows you to do, it, it makes it a different process than spray can graffiti. Whereas with spray cans, you can get all your first lines down, you can sketch all you want to underneath your design, and then you can start doing the fills, and then you do your outlines. Lastly, I usually ghost in the letters to figure out where they're going, and then go straight into outlines and then I can do my fill after that. And there's pros and cons to that. Um, but that process has made me approach graffiti lettering differently, differently, I guess that's right, than most graffiti artists who use spray cans. So, that's just a, that's just a different thing. that one for now let's keep going let's do this guy artist choice of colors I'm gonna use this turquoise it's a paka a p o k a let's do those rounded letters that I was talking about with like the gaps between them so the first thing I do is just make sure I know where the letters are going, a general feel for the shapes. And in this case, I'm gonna play with some first lines a little bit before I go straight into outlines because I want it to be a little more elaborate than my other shirts have been today. And I'm gonna keep as much of the space between letters, um, as you said, not filled in as I can, but while remaining or maintaining legibility. Again, that's a very important thing here. It's not just style, but legibility. I need to not have that point there. This is an O. I'm gonna make this very round to make it an O. I get complaints that my O's look like D's and I can avoid that by making this a very solid and rounded shape and no points in it. I think that'll be fine. I'll bring this a little more over. I need room for the word on top. That's cool. What's up, guys? It's. I'm gonna do this in a script style right there. 
and underneath goes the boom box goes down here I'm not worried about that yet let's go into the black outlines do the lines and then the shadows and again I can do that before the fill so I'll do the fill after that There's 170 people in here. Oh my goodness, guys. I think for today, the highest on YouTube has been like 30. I really appreciate the support, everybody. It's crazy. I guess this is a good time to remind everybody humbly that I have channel memberships available. And one of the perks of those memberships is I'm going to do a private live stream probably every week and that live stream will be just consisting of only requests i won't be painting orders i'll just be painting what you guys want me to paint and you can take screenshots and maybe i'll take pictures after the live stream and post them somewhere so if you request something you can get a picture of what i painted um i think that'd be a lot of fun so if you want to do that please do that that'd be neat you don't have to though It's a paka. All right, let's throw some drop shadows down here. What should I do? I'm gonna make it a 3D effect instead of just a solid black drop shadow. So I'm gonna pick an angle. In this case, I'm pretty much gonna go straight down. And I'm gonna bring a line down and then connect it. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time making sure that this lighting and shadowing is perfectly realistic because it's just not my goal i'm not painting a realism design i'm trying to get this design out quickly while still being stylistic so we're going with a good enough sort of approach and i'm gonna just pick it now that i've picked a physical direction for the three-dimensional effect now i can pick a lighting direction and i'm gonna say the lighting is coming from over here so everything on this side is going to be shadowed more than anything on this side so this is lighter this is lighter and these will be darker and again it's not going to be perfect it's just going to be enough to kind of add an effect quickly In addition to that lighting source, everything at the bottom is also darker by default. I want to add this even though it wouldn't exist. And that'll be fine. Now, while I got the black, I'm gonna do this boom box. Just a simple cartoony style boom box. Drips. 
Okay, done with the black. I'm gonna go get my brick wall stencil. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do green. I'm gonna do green bricks. And I'm gonna put them just at the bottom. I'm angling my airbrush towards the stencil because you're always gonna get overspray if you're using a stencil like this, especially with no masking on the outside. So if I angle my airbrush this way, then all the overspray is gonna go inside the stencil instead of outside the stencil. Doing a circular motion, trying to get an even coat of paint. I don't know if green was a good idea for a stencil for the bricks. It's a little bit too light. Can't line up my stencil right. Good enough. I don't want the brick super dark anyway. I appreciate all the compliments that I'm getting, guys. Thank you. Um, I'm not able to read all of them. I've never had so many people in the stream at one time, but I'm going to read them afterwards. Got a little bit of a clog of paint in here. What do we got? Using the needle to clean the inside of this cone out. Probably can't see that well, but, but I can. And I'm the one painting, so. Much better. Okay. There is a fly on my shirt. Get out of here. And let's fill in these letters with the teal. I'm gonna come back with the green on top of the teal and tint it. going to, what am I going to do? <laughs> Alright, yeah. First I'm going to do an outline on the bottom of everything to give myself a little bit of a padding so that I can now come back and do these dagger strokes upwards from the bottom. I'll do it in slow motion really everybody. Helps me color in the lines. Now I'm angling my airbrush up because I want it to be more transparent up here, not as much paint. Thank you. 
I don't like that the green is fading straight into green. So I'm gonna put some more of this turquoise on top of that. While this paint is still wet, crap, I wanted to do this also. Doing white highlights, sharp white lines with the airbrush is something that's difficult for a lot of people. And that's because, again, airbrush paint is transparent. Opaque paints like this white are a lot thicker and a lot harder to work with. So I have a technique for doing that is I thin my white paint down more than normal and I do my white highlights while this paint is still wet and what that does is the combination of the air pressure and the wet paint allows me to push this blue paint through the shirt onto the shirt board and leaves me with a nice crisp of course nice crisp white finish hopefully that works so I'm gonna get real close to the shirt and do a white line and this white is a combination of white paint, but also it's a it's the blue paint being pushed away from the shirt. So it's not really covering the blue paint as much as it is removing the blue paint, which is a great way to get a nice crisp outline. But you have to have a lot of control because you have to be really close and you have to move really fast. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the top. I make neon effects. Are you talking about the neon effect that people have been doing with spray paint lately? I do like that thick line and then I do a thinner, brighter line and a thinner, brighter line and then a white line on top. I could do that. Um, I'm not gonna do that here because I'm kinda copying a design that they ordered, but that's a good, I do wanna do some more lighting effects. I wanna add a lot more lighting and three dimensional effects to my letters. And again, that's something that I can do in my own time because the more of those effects you add, the harder it is for stuff to read usually. And legibility again is a big factor when I'm doing these shirts for customers. Um, that's done. I'm gonna throw some white highlights here too. Look, these highlights are not nearly as bright because this red paint is already completely dry. they'll still be fine okay I got let's do the spray can this is a neat little spray can design over here hats off keep your hat on please quill first make sure I put this on the right side of the hoodie on the back yes we got a spray can on this side that somebody stepped on apparently let's see if I can build it real quick line there
and I kind of need to do the, the background before I can paint the letters on that. Purple, purple. Please make a doke. <laughs> Please make a doke. I would love to do a collab with doke. Doke's a lot of fun. Quill, Q-U-I-L-L. -L. So, that's gonna be there. <laughs> I'm not in the same league as a doke. He's probably one of the guys that would make fun of me for using an airbrush. Smo, on the other hand, is a cool guy. We talk a lot about strategies. I need somebody here reading comments out loud the whole time. All right, here's a cool technique. The splatter technique, I'm gonna use this clothespin and I'm gonna spray paint onto the end of it. And what's gonna happen is paint's gonna splatter off. Except I'm doing it wrong. I make the little splattery dude uh It's dangerous though because you make a mess if you don't do it right. I'm gonna add a darker purple onto this because I want to. While the pair purple paint is still wet, again, can't get the thing in there. I'm gonna do my highlights. Do like under lighting. Not because it's realistic, but because it adds a lot of contrast and will stand out. And I'm gonna do my lettering. This is like a tag style lettering. It's not graffiti, it's not script, it's somewhere in the middle. Well, it's not in the middle, but Q-U-I-L-L. -L. Again, legibility is important, so. Stylistic, but not illegible. This is the goal, at least. That'll work. I don't want to do this one. My battery's actually running low on my camera here. I probably have time for a couple more. Let me do the script one first. That's fun to watch. Bertha, B-E-R-T-H-A. much as I love the graffiti style, a cursive calligraphy style design like this is a lot of fun to paint. It's really satisfying to just throw those lines down real fast. I'm gonna go ahead and do the background on it too, even though it's simple. And then I'm gonna skip this one for now. It's the same spray can one as I did over there with Quill, but I don't think I have battery life to do 
the next graffiti one I want to do and that one. So. Real simple text. This design is my most popular design. It might be a little cheesy. Cheesy to me, I wouldn't wear it. But it's popular. It's fast, it's easy, and I'm not complaining. I'll do that, and then I come back with pink. Do some circles to get an even fill. And then like a pink drop shadow. And that's it. Sometimes I'll do that. And if I'm feeling real, uh, I don't know. My grandpa would say froggy. If I'm feeling real froggy. Do some highlights. I said that on the internet, froggy. All right, that's it. ding. Okay, this will be the last one. More graffiti. It's a flame design, but they want red and navy blue. So I'm gonna do the letters in a navy blue. Where's my navy blue? More like a royal blue. Deep blue. So paint straight from the bottle. Filled that up about halfway. I never fill it up more than about halfway because you'll risk spilling and you don't have room to reduce or whatever. So, and then an exact measurement of a little bit of reducer. That's hard to define how much reducer to use because every color is different. Every different paint acts differently, and I need a different amount of reducer. Um, general rule is probably about 10% reducer. Some colors I don't reduce at all. Other colors, I do a lot more than that. You'll have to play with it a little bit. What's my battery at? I got 26%, that's enough. Um, strange text, three ski baby. Number three ski, okay. Make sure it's on the front, yes. I see a very repetitive request for someone to, for me to paint something for somebody. Right now, again, these are all paid orders. I'm painting stuff that people have already ordered. I'm not painting requests right now, but I will do live streams with just requests on them. Um, if you would like to support me on the channel membership situation, that'd be great and we could do that, but at the moment, just painting orders. I appreciate all of these. And <laughs> please do daily live streams. I'm gonna do a lot more. I've been doing a lot of work to try to get caught up on my other responsibilities and improve the, the studio. You notice, you might not notice, which is a good thing. You don't notice an air compressor in your face right now, interrupting everything I'm saying every couple of minutes. That's an improvement. Um, I'm gonna do a lot more live streams because I really enjoy doing this. And like I mentioned, those private live streams are gonna be fun, which sounds like a real adult weird thing to say, but it's not what, the, <laughs> not what I'm doing. My, my live streams, the private ones, will be not me fulfilling orders, but fulfilling your requests again. And that'll give us a lot more room to paint what you have been requesting. And take my time doing it. I would love to do some like some like giveaways and stuff, but I don't know how that works yet. I don't want to promise anything, but uh, definitely want to do more live streams. I want to do more community engagement. I want to paint your requests. I want to talk to you guys and answer questions and stuff. When I'm doing these orders like this, I feel a little rushed because I am. This is my work day. I'm trying to get as many of these done as I can so that I can ship them out to customers. 
So there's a balance between talking to you guys and painting as fast as I can. Um, but those private live streams, I'll set aside time that's just, just to hang out and go a little slower. And there's several facets of my, my YouTube channel and what I'm doing here. One of which is I want to be entertaining to the vast majority of people who would just want to watch satisfying painting videos. But there's also a, a huge subsection of, of viewers that want to learn how to do graffiti and learn how to do airbrushing when those are two different things kind of. But I want to teach airbrushing because physical airbrushing is where I have a lot of skill and experience in um, graffiti letters are something I've only done for the last couple of years and I've, I really enjoy them but where my expertise is is how to use this tool um, if you're a viewer and you want to learn how to use this airbrush I encourage you to try I'll warn you that it's very difficult and has a big learning curve it's like learning an instrument but once you've learned that instrument um, all you want to do is play it and a lot of people get really impressed by how well you play it and invite you to go play it in places and you make money etc so if you want to learn how to airbrush please follow along and another reason to uh, I keep on talking about how to support me but another reason to support me through this YouTube channel is that I get to spend less time painting these orders and more time making not only live streams and comment content like this, but intentional how to airbrush videos and you know being more engaging and involved with being an airbrush teacher tutor instead of just a t-shirt painter. And that's kind of the goal. But honestly, um, just seeing the response from you guys in the comments and the engagement that I'm getting and the, the positive and negative feedback here is all helpful and encouraging. Um, I'm, I'm floored by the response that I've gotten from some of these videos and from how many comments and suggestions that I've gotten from you guys. Please keep it coming. It's so encouraging to see all of that and it really motivates me to keep on making these videos. Um, and I don't know how to improve or what to improve without your feedback, so keep sending it. Um, there's a Discord channel. You can look at my community page on the YouTube page. There's a, there's a couple links in different places. Actually, in the description of this video, I believe. If not, then my other videos. Um, there's a link to my Discord server, and that's where it's best to talk to me and get in touch with me about YouTube content, videos and practices and things like that. Of course, I also have Instagram and, and everything else, but I can't respond to a million comments on Instagram. So, um, I am reachable. You can get in touch with me if you have a question. I'd love to do that. Love you, love you, love you, love you. We we'll love you too. Thank you. Got more clogs in my airbrush. There we go. Bum, 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 bum. I need to do these flames a little bit differently. I don't like the way these flames look. They're popular, it's ordered a lot. I just don't personally like this style so much. It's my battery. Battery is 20%. I might have time to do that other shirt too, we'll see. Get some white highlights.
Is it a 0.5 millimeter? This is a 0.3. Um, these are a 0.3. Um, but you don't have to use a 0.3, a 0.5 is great. Also, you can get just as fine lines on t-shirts with a 0.5. Um, on t-shirts, you have a lot more flexibility with nozzle size than on something like a hard surface because t-shirts are absorbent. It's way easier to paint on this than it is to paint on a bike or a helmet or something like that. Um, even even canvas, anything absorbent is easier to paint on than something not absorbent. It's because I can paint at a much higher pressure. I can get weight closer to the surface. My line's gonna be sharper and tighter without worrying about splattering. Um, all of those are obstacles when it comes to painting hard surfaces. I'm not nearly as experienced in painting on helmets and hard surfaces as I am painting on t-shirts. I'll say that right now. That's something that I want to learn. Um, being an online business, I haven't had as much opportunity to paint that sort of thing because it's way harder to ship those sorts of things. But it's something I will delve into as time goes on. Hi, 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 hi. Let's go ahead and do this, this last one too. Might as well. Black and purple. I've got 15%. I should be all right. It's the same as the other one. It's that spray can. Do, 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 do. No, you know what? I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do the text over here. Forever missed. This is a tricky one. Forever missed, never forgotten. On the top. It's hard to not. It's a lot of text for one line. RIP. This is actually names and dates, and I don't know how comfortable they'll be with that. So I'm going to leave the rest of that there for anonymity. And I'll just go back to this one. But yeah, we're running out of battery here very soon. Hopefully, I can get this one done. Let's get this spray can down. I want to say it again. I'm overwhelmed by the response right now, guys. I'm so thankful that you all are here and watching. It's crazy to me to think that, um, that what I do every day right here is interesting enough that this many people want to watch me just do my job, right? It's, it's cool. That's really awesome. I'm not used to this. Let's grab that purple. This time I'm gonna do just purple. No, I'm not. I lied. You are good airbrush, thank you. You are good viewer. Baby girl Leah. Baby girl Leah. But yeah, I will add a link to this video if there's not already one there. I think someone said there isn't one to the Discord channel. Um, if you guys wanna come in and talk about airbrushing and graffiti and share your artwork and ask questions and stuff, that's the place to do it. Um, 
it'll be neat. And uh, one more shameless plug about channel memberships and stuff like that. Supporting me through a YouTube channel membership allows me to do a lot more of this and a lot better. I'm, I'm focused on, I'm motivated to improve everything about this and being given some compensation to that allows me to do less of these and more of this and you know it's just directly proportional to how much I can do and that would be helpful being a member gives you like a special role on the discord or server and you know icons and silly things like that if you care about those things but it also just helps me I never want to pressure anybody to doing that because I don't need you to do that if you can't but if you got two bucks a month and you want to put it in my pocket, I will be grateful. Baby girl Leah. Shadows on there again. And this will be the last shirt. I'm almost out of battery, like I said. And I got a lot more to paint today. I will be doing more of these live streams. This is great for me because it makes me focus on getting shirts out quick. And it gets to engage and have some, <laughs> kind of some social time. I'm talking to myself, but I'm talking to you, you know, it's weird. But, uh. I enjoy doing this and I'm really glad to see that you guys enjoy seeing it. Um, let me go through these shirts we did again today. We did the COVID one. That was fun. Let me, let me throw some highlights on this script design. But that's it guys, I'm gonna get off of here. Um, Thank you for your support. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for, for, you guys are really motivating to see the response I'm getting here. It means a lot to me. I'm gonna say it a bunch of times because it's true. Thank you guys. Um, I'm not gonna promise any dates or times because when I do that, I usually fall short on them. But I would just say that soon, I will see you again. And I'm very glad that you are here. And I love you. I'm going to keep learning and growing and improving, and you should too. And all of those other things. So, without further ado, this is what I look like. What's up? I always get the question of how my camera works. It's a, it's a neck mount. Just sitting on my chest. But, thanks guys. Love you guys. I'm dipping out.